Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 525. It's Monday, June 24th, 2013, 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Internet talk radio for your imagination. Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Plus, we bring you the segment Wow Shuts Wow, where we hear some interesting stories about technology and traveling. Mike's Daily Podcast. And I have some interesting travel stories to tell you, and I will begin on raveling Mike's Daily Podcast. Them right now. So, I'm not really a big beer connoisseur, I must admit, but my friend Mike is visiting from Ventura, and he's all over that shit. Because he likes to drink beer. We were in the fine town of Petaluma drinking Lagunitas. They have a cool little patio there and people were nice to us. It's nice when people let you sit at their table because there's no room. Mike's Daily Podcast. And then later we went to Moyens, another brewery that's in Novato. I like to drink beers that are blue. Mike's. I mean dark color. Daily. You know, your stouts. Podcast. Because it's starting to make me very yeah. stout to drink those Um, but there are some very flavorful beers that I have tried and here in Northern California so many beers to test people making beers all over the place and that's it but Lagunitas is in like a industrial like a commercial building area so you're like parking what looks like you're parking at like a place that makes ball bearings or something you know like industrial park and then the Moyans is in like an actual restaurant type deal. And oh, hey, it has an L in their name. Moylands. All right. So Moyans, I guess it's more Irish than Jewish is what I have learned. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mom. It's Benita the Brodeo Queen. How y'all doing? And it's a disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? It's a good thing that you're not a travel writer. Yeah, I think I get people lost real quick. Or, you know, give the wrong names. I will tell you, though, all around there, there's some crappy traffic. Every I, I mentioned that on my last podcast about getting stuck in traffic going up to Santa Rosa in that same area. And, man, on the days that they've got races going on at that racetrack up there, forget it. It's impossible to get anywhere, I must say. That's why I like to live out in the countryside where there ain't nobody, just me and my lovely wife, Benita the Rodeo Queen tell you what i like to be watching the television and watching reruns of gilmore girls you know what i don't like that so much yeah gilmore girls that's the show where people talk really fast and they do this sort of thing the the same writer also writes now for the tv show bunheads and what she likes to do is have several conversations going on at one time so like uh, disgruntled fiddle player you and I will be talking I really enjoy beer and you'll respond yeah uh, beer's good but I kind of like the watered down American beer so we keep talking like that meanwhile Benita's saying something like I love Gilmore Girls I watch it often beer's really delicious Mike I like to drink it me too it's really good I really enjoy the Gilmore Girls and the girls and the Gilmore Girls and then this goes on and on and on till the commercial break that's trying to sell you uh sell phones oh look who's just walked in hello there mike i make the root beer i'm the brewmaster brewmaster you've been hearing us talk a lot about beer what do you think about it i don't know what it is i make the root beer you do and a lot of people come here to drink your root beer because you have also established a brewery that people make a destination to show up at and sit around and drink the root beer and listen to this great piano playing music in the background. Yeah, I really like that piano player. Yeah, he's really good. Listen to that. Beautiful keys. Just tinkling away. Mock, that's me after I drink a lot of beer. Interesting. Tinkling away. We got it. So Facebook is working on a news reading service for mobile devices, according to businessweek.com. And the Wall Street Journal. This development shouldn't come as a surprise. It says the invitation sent out for Facebook's product announcement last week resembled a coffee stained print publication, and speculation quickly focused on the coming of a Facebook newsreader. 
interesting, especially since Google just got rid of their news reader. Why would Facebook be doing this? Well, apparently these are some reasons. Facebook needs mobile. Uh, Facebook needs users to stay engaged with its product on mobile devices. And the company's difficulties on mobile have been a key factor in its disappointing, disappointing performance on the stock market. So reading news will be the next plank in their platform. It isn't Facebook's Google Reader, so there is a frantic scramble to replace Google's RSS Reader, which was beloved by a relatively small but incredibly loud portion of Internet users. And Facebook is trying to get a hold of that. I have a news reader app that I use on my phone. It's actually through Google. And I really don't ever look at it except for when there's like a big national story or national emergency. And I'm kind of trying to follow it. And I'll look at it. It it aggregates a bunch of news stories from different news services. I kind of like it. Sounds really boring. I'm going to leave. Bye, I'll buy Mike's the big head. Uh, I do have the head for it. Uh, But what do you think about uh, Facebook News Reader? Are you excited about it? Are you going to... Now, this isn't to be confused with your news feed, which is telling you what everybody's doing. Like, hey, I made brownies today. Mark, I heard about those brownies in your last podcast. I sure would like some. The ones with the little chocolate chips? Oh, yeah, that sounds real good. Well, email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Tell me what you think about all that. And also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show. Check out the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. That is where to go to find... The link to where to listen to us in iTunes. Subscribe to us there. Also, you can rate the show and comment on the show there. And we also have links to where to find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Yelp. We also are on... The show is actually played through SoundCloud. And you can also hear it through Spreaker.com. And all those links at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com as well as the blog and the podcast picture. Oh, and the Amazon deal of the day. What is it today? A double hammock. In tropical color. Was 159, now it's 94.90. That's 41% off. Woo! So if you purchase that through mikesdailypodcast.com, we see a little money and we go yippee and we go woo! Mikesdailypodcast.com. Wow, shuts, wow. So growing up, my mom, whenever she was surprised when she heard something, she'd go, wow, shuts, wow. And so these are some stories that have caught my attention and make me go, wow, shots, wow. Um, I guess to explain, uh, shuts is a term of endearment. And my mom would be saying to me basically, wow, Mike, wow. But it sounds funnier when you say, wow, shots, wow. So here's our first story. <laughs> Skype caught spying on users. The Skype support says the voice over IP system is as secure as we can possibly make it. Gee, where have we heard that before lately? Uh, From the lips of one Obama. And that surprises everyone. But the Skype support system boasts about its encryption. As for selling your info to third parties, it says... Skype never sells your registration details to third parties. Yet, will Skype spy on you, dictate what you can say, and sell out your account's username? Or will it leak details of conversations if you use sensitive words that are deemed inappropriate, such as Tiananmen, Amnesty International, or Human Rights Watch? Human Rights Watch. I don't use those words very often, as you can tell. If you're in China, the answer to all of these questions is yes. And it's also a strong yes if you live outside China but are talking to someone within China's borders. Jeffrey Knockle, he's a 27 year old computer science graduate student at the University of New Mexico, Albuquerque, has uncovered how Skype's partner in China, Tom Online, has been monitoring its Chinese users and relaying information regarding usage of certain keywords back to its servers based in the mainland. What it does after that is not yet known. Tom Skype is available is the available version of Skype in China, used by nearly ninety six million people. For two years Knockle has worked on Skype, cracking its encryption and decoding the keywords. 
according to a Bloomberg report, Knockle found that the surveillance feature in Tom Skype conducts the monitoring directly on a user's computer, scanning messages for specific words and phrases. When the program finds a match, it sends a copy of the offending missive to a Tom Skype computer server, along with the account's username, time, and date of transmission, and whether the message was sent or received by the user. Wow, just then, did you hear that? Uh, a, a couple billion more books of... George Orwell's 1984 were sold on Amazon. This article also from the Epoch Times, this one having to do with Facebook. It says, many people have always suspected that posting something on Facebook and liking certain pages reveals something about their personality. Now it's official. A study by the University of Cambridge and the National Academy of Sciences has established a scientific relationship between likes on Facebook and a user's personality. Some of the findings merely reflect common sense. If you like the pages of George W. Bush and John McCain, guess what? You're a Republican. The same goes for the quantity of friends you have. And then there are those people that just get friends by the hundreds full uh, that don't even know who they're friending. But uh, that's just something we call a sickness. So what are the few key pages that determine the five factors of openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, emotional stability, and age on Facebook that determine your personality? Well, if you like the Colbert Report, for example, you are open, stable, and intelligent, but not very extroverted and agreeable. You are also likely to be older. If you like Mitt Romney, you are on the bottom of openness, but on the top of conscientiousness. Highly agreeable, as well as stable, and, well, very old. If you like Hello Kitty, you're out of luck, or a kid. The seemingly innocent Japanese cartoon figure represents a low in being agreeable and stable, as well as being conscientious. The only plus... And maybe a good excuse is that people who like Hello Kitty are also very young. This article says, last but not least, people who like Mozart or The Godfather always knew that they are smart. And now they have scientific proof for it. People who like Harley Davidson and Brett Michaels are on the other end of the intelligence spectrum. Poor Brett Michaels. Hey, you had to have some brains to write Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Or maybe not. <laughs> Technology theme now moves into the world of green tea, greenness, greennaciousness. Green of the road, airlines, hotels, cars, and more are becoming eco friendly. This, according to USA Today, in their travel section. When you travel these days, you're doing so in a more environmentally friendly fashion than you did a decade ago. And you probably can't even tell. Airlines are flying planes that have more fuel-efficient engines and are lighter in weight to save on costly jet fuel. Architects are designing hotels to be more efficient in their use of energy and water and to reduce waste. Rental car agencies are adding more hybrid and electric cars to their fleets. I saw that in Portland. The hotel I stayed at was very environmentally friendly. In fact, if you wanted to save a little money, they would charge you less if... You asked for no maid service, which you could do, which was very nice because I don't really need maid service. I'm a clean guy. Hotels are also adopting motion sensors, key cards that control lights, fluorescent bulbs and ceiling fans aimed at saving energy. To save water, they're installing low flow shower heads and low flow toilets. They're recycling more and replacing individual shampoo bottles with large dispensers. That's true. That's what they were doing at the hotel I stayed at. Plane manufacturers are building more fuel-efficient planes. Airlines have adopted new technology and practices to reduce their carbon footprint. For instance, U.S. Airways is replacing gas-powered ground vehicles that transport bags with electric ones. And speaking of cars, rental cars, major car rental companies are adding electric cars to their already growing hybrid fleet. Enterprise, for example, has more than 5,000 hybrids and electric vehicles. But those cars do tend to cost more to rent. For the cheap shall destroy the earth. So people don't realize things are getting greener as they're traveling. And people don't realize that they are getting there on time when they're flying. And they're still complaining. 
Baggage handling is better. Flights are more on time. But consumer complaints are on the rise. The U.S. airline industry has gotten better at getting passengers in their bags to their destinations. But they're not winning the customers over. According to USA Today, in 2012, on-time performances for airlines was 81.8% compared to just 80% in 2011. So consumer complaints are up, and it's mostly about flight problems. They also complained about reservations, ticketing, and boarding, customer service, and baggage. An associate professor of marketing at the W. Frank Barton School of Business in Wichita State says that every time there are more planes in the sky and more people flying, airline performance suffers. And baggage delivery has gotten better for another reason. Now that most airlines charge for checked bags, travelers are packing less. They're carrying on what they can. As you probably noticed, if you've flown in the past couple of months, everybody is bringing carry-ons onto the plane and not checking anything in. You see less and less people check stuff in. They're shipping what they can't and doing whatever they can to avoid fees. There's nothing a consumer hates more than paying fee after fee after fee. This new analysis of federal data by researchers at Purdue University in Indiana and Wichita State University in Kansas ranked the 14 leading airlines in terms of overall performance. And guess who won? Virgin America emerges the leader in its first year of inclusion in the report. JetBlue, AirTran Airways, Delta Airlines, and Hawaiian Airlines followed. United Airlines was at the bottom. Consumers complained more about United with 4.24 per 100,000 passengers lodging grievances. Last year, United merged its computer systems with those of Continental Airlines, causing delays and other problems. Consumers had the fewest complaints about Southwest Airlines. And that makes sense to me, because Southwest doesn't give you a seat. You have to go and find your seat yourself. They make it... That somehow takes a lot of stress out of it. That makes it so, you know, I can end up sitting wherever I want, basically, as long as it's in the back of the plane. Because all those other idiots took the other seats up towards the front. Dang it. As we go outside, the last place on Earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast. Interesting that Delta has bought a part of Virgin Atlantic. And now they're going to like be advertising each other's prices. And you'll be able to uh, get, let's see, your, your Delta miles and your Virgin miles and points merged together. So that's exciting news. Just hope Delta doesn't crud up Virgin because, man, Virgin's so good compared to Delta. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is a drawing with Shelly Shuhart, who just happened to be on the patio here of the last place on Earth. Right now, she has walked in. That's right, Mike. That's right, Mike. Mike Matthews. That's right, Mike. Mike, Mike. say it slow. Mike Matthews. Yes. It's Shelly Shuhart, the shop supervisor. Yes, it is. And you're in this drawing... And we are discussing recycling. I know I do it so well. I'm so thoughtful. That's what you keep saying in the cartoon. And we see, however, that you are completely wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Maybe you should read the cartoon again. And you'll see. Whatever. Well, anyway, that would be at MikeStaleyPodcast.com. Mike, I'll tell you what. I miss that. Where's that piano now? I miss that tinkling. Uh, Is this going to turn to another joke about you drinking a lot of beer? And relieving yourself? Heck no, Mark. I don't work blue. Oh, that's good. Benita? I don't work blue either. I don't know what that means. Hi, Shelly. Hello, like Benita. Like, oh my God, you're like so beautiful. Thanks. You know how I keep beautiful? Um, I don't know, Benita. How? Black seed. Oh, that's like so interesting. Well, we've learned a lot from you too. Tomorrow we will bring you the segment News Random. Plus, we will hear... From Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Yeah, I really like that piano play. Well, he's back inside of the last place on earth, and we're not going back in there. We're outside, and we stay outside because that's how we end the show is outside enjoying nature. This ground fiddle player, Shelly Shuhart, and I are going to go and pick up boys. No, Benina, I was saying we should go and pick up the toys. You know, the ones that we're going to take the toys for tot. Um, isn't that like a Christmas thing? 
Benita, you wanted to go pick up boys? You know I'd never do that. I love you. Oh, that's a relief. Sort of. I love hipsters. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.